So a lot of you are at a learning phase where you're trying to practice SQL, but you don't want the hassle of learning how to start or provision a database server. Uh, you don't want to learn how to deal with authentication, server infrastructures, and all of that. You just want a way to practice writing and executing SQL statements. And for this, SQLite is a really good tool. And if you don't have SQLite, um, the fastest way I can think of to get you started is to have you convert a CSV file into SQLite and start learning how to work with databases that way. So I'm going to explain what a CSV file and how it compares to SQLite databases in a second. But in this video, I just want to show you how that is done in under 5 minutes. So going from a CSV file to an SQLite database and start writing your select statements in 5 minutes. So let's get started. So CSV stands for comma separated values. A CSV file is a text file that uses a comma to separate values. So if I open this with a, a text editor, I'm using text edit, you can use notepad, you can use anything that's on your computer, but essentially what you see is, is all of these values are separated with a comma. So this is, uh, this give it the, uh, the, this is why we call it a comma separated values file, a CSV file, okay? And now a CSV file is actually very, very common. Um, if you've if you've worked it with Google Sheets in the past or if you have Microsoft Excel installed, then chances are you've come across a CSV file. So I could also open this in something like a spreadsheet software. For example, um, I could open this in Numbers. So I don't have Google, I don't have, uh, I, I don't have Microsoft Excel on my computer, but I do have Numbers. So I'm going to open that up in Numbers and I've already done that. So let me show you how it looks like. It looks like that, right? So what it does is that your spreadsheet engine is what it's going to do is it's going to find all the comma separated values and it's going to create this uh, in a spreadsheet format and you can see them uh, in rows and columns and in cells, which is something a lot of us are uh, pretty familiar with. Okay, so so that's what a CSV file is. Now I can let me close this up, and this is pretty huge, um, and we can check that by. Let's not do that first. Let's actually go into our directory, and I'm actually I have a folder called Python for Bankers. I'm gonna create. Uh, hold on a second. Let me see. Okay, so I don't have it. I'm gonna go into my. Um, where did I have this uh, work? Okay, so I'm gonna go to work documents work, and I'm gonna go into Python for Bankers. And okay, so I'm in here, and I can do a word count. And there are a few ways you can do a word column, but I'm gonna say it by line, so dash L, and I'm gonna say, go and look at my lone new CSV. So word count, it tells me I have what, 887,000 rows of uh, data in my CSV file. So it's gonna be a somewhat huge, all right? Not, 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 not really, really huge, but 887,000 rows of data. It's gonna take a while for any kind of spreadsheet software to have that open. So that's what a CSV file is. Now SQLite, SQLite on the other hand is an in-process library that implements a self-contained serverless zero configuration transactional SQL database engine. I know that's a mouthful right there. I just read that off the website. But what it does, and I'll explain that and it gets a, a little bit apparent. But when it says self-contained, it means that this you could open that up, it, could, it would work on your computer, work on your machine, serverless. You don't have to create a database, a, a, a database server like how you would uh, if you were to use let's say Postgre or, or, or MySQL or any kind of Oracle. So this is a zero configuration, serverless, self-contained SQL database engine. It is open source, it's free for use for any purpose, whether it's commercial or private. So that's what we're gonna be using. Now, before we, be before we begin, I'm gonna give you a minute here, I want you to pause the video. If you haven't downloaded SQL, SQLite, um, that's SQLite, okay, SQLite 3. If you haven't done that, I want you to pause the video. I'm gonna give you a second now to go to the download page. I'm gonna give you the link in the description and I want you to download that. If you're on Linux, look for the specific instructions on your distros. If you're on Mac OS, you can also do it through Homebrew. So if you know what Homebrew is, um, you do something like brew install and you can do brew install um, SQLite, okay? So I'm gonna give you a second pause right here. Go and get SQLite installed. Um, if you don't know how to do that, look at the instructions in my description. If not, just do a Google search, search for things like SQLite download uh, Windows, okay? Or you can go to sqlite.org and do a, uh, uh, click on the downloads and follow through the download pr process. Make sure you have SQLite before you resume the video. So take a second here and I'll see you in a second. Okay, once you have SQLite installed, create a database and name it loan.db. You can name it anything you want, but because I'm using loan underscore new dot CSV as my example, so I'm gonna name it loan.db. If you're following on with another CSV, feel free to name it anything you want. Now this should happen in the same directory as where you start loan underscore new dot CSV or your own CSV file. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna call SQLite tree 
and we're gonna call we're gonna give it our database name so i'm gonna call it loan.db now obviously you can call it anything you want right but because this database doesn't exist yet in our directory so what it would do is it's gonna go ahead and create that actually before i do that um i want to make sure that i change my directory into data underscore input so so this is my working folder right now this is where i'm at and then i can call my sqlite tree so cd stands for change directory okay pwd stands for print working directory if you're on a windows um this would be dir okay so sqlite tree and i'm gonna call it loan.db so that's gonna be my command to create a database called loan.db because it doesn't exist if it does exist it would open that up but because it doesn't exist sqlite would go ahead and create one first with this name so we're gonna press enter and now we're in sqlite shell okay we're in the db shell so step one call sqlite loan.db make sure you have sqlite installed already now because it doesn't exist sqlite will automatically create one for us and since we're in the sqlite shell now we want to set the mode to csv and the way we do that is we say dot mode csv and we want to give it a name we want to give our table a name so i'm going to say dot mode csv switch to the csv mode and uh the name of my table is going to be records so this is the loan record so i have uh all my loan data all my loan data in a in a big csv file i want to create a table containing all of that and i want to name the table records so again it's up to you what you want to name it so once you've done that you press enter and now you created a table so now how do you import how do you perform the import so you do that by passing in the name of your csv file and the table so we name it records right so what we're going to do is we're going to say dot import and we're going to put in the name of our csv file and here i see that my name is loan underscore new csv because it's already in the existing directory so i can just go ahead and say loan underscore new csv and now i'm going to say import this into the table called records so i'm going to do that real quick dot import name of the csv file space name of the table so that's records press enter and we are done so remember this is a pretty huge file this is 887,000 rows of data so you want to give it a second uh it's not gonna it depends on the and we're done so that takes about maybe seven eight seconds depending on your computer depending on the the, the size of the file that you want to import but it's that simple three steps and we're done so i told you earlier uh, at the beginning of the video that we want to create a uh, uh, I want to create a video to show you how that's done in five minutes and this is it deliver on the promise five minutes you have something from the uh, CSV all the way to an SQLite database SQLite database now how do we make sure that all of this is done correctly so in the following steps here I'm just showing you some optional stuff uh, to check that everything works as expected and I'll, I'm also going to show you some examples of some very common SQLite operations since we're in this video already okay so the first thing we're going to do is we just put a dot tables dot tables actually say hey show me the tables in our database so what do we have we have records that's exactly as we expected because we did create a, a table called records and then we said dot tables that's what we get so we can also say take a quick look um, at the schema of our records table and this returns the statement that created our record uh, records table so we do that by calling schema and we give it the name of the table so remember the name of the table is records so i'm going to say records so this is going to show you the statement that created that so it's going to give you a SQL statement that looks like that create table if you work with sql in the past um you will see this uh, th this is this will look very familiar to you so what it would do is that it shows you the sql um, statement that you use to create the table for you so create table records um there's the id column it's a text column year it's a text column so and so forth all the way to the end okay so some of them will have to be um, changed into integer later when we work with pi work, work with this in python or uh, in your favorite programming language doesn't matter okay um, later on I'll show you how to do this with R and Python in a, maybe in a separate video and we'll show you I'll show you how to go from text converting that from a raw character um, to a integer um, and do all kind of things but for now we know that uh, our operation has, succe has succeeded so you can also optionally if you're a little bit more advanced and you say hey can I use a, a different way to get like a summary of the table structure if you're a little bit more advanced um, you can do something like a pragma as well so here I'm going to turn on my header mode so dot header and I'm gonna say on so this is gonna turn on the header mode and now I'm gonna change the mode now to column and then I'm I can say something like pragma if you don't know what I'm doing here don't worry about it but I can say table info and then I'm gonna pass in the name of my table so again what do we name our table 
records. So here, and you always want to end your SQL uh, statements with a semicolon. So I'm going to end a sem semicolon right here, press enter, and now I get this. So it gave me um, a, a, a nice uh, sort of like a tabular summary of that. It gave you things like the name of the columns, the type of the column. So whether it's a text, whether it's, you know, whatever that is, uh, whether it's the, the, the primary key, whether there is a null values or not. If there is a null value, how many of them? And it would show you like, okay, there are three null values in this DTI, uh, stands for debt to income. Because we're working with a loan, loan um, data, there is this column called debt to income. And it says, okay, how many of those out of 880,000 rows of data, how many of them are? have now values in this column, all right? That's zero in, in here. So that's good, that's fairly good. So the first two commands here that I put up here, it turns the header mode on and then it formats the presentation a little bit. So here I'm saying format it by, uh, and show it in, in this in this nice uh, co column note format, okay? Now once you're in here, um, you can also start to write some SQL statements in here. So if you're familiar with like, things like select, from, limit, you can do all of that. Uh, if you don't, maybe in a separate video, I can go into something more in depth for SQL. But for now, uh, let's do something really simple. Let's do something like select. And I'm going to select all columns. So this tells you, th this says all columns. You can say select region, select installments. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I say select all the columns from now the name of the table. So I can say records because that's the name of the table, right? And I said, don't return all the results though. Only show me the first five. So limit five is going to say perform, perform this select statement um, and then return only the first five rows of the data okay now remember always end your sql statement with a semicolon okay so that's how it, it, it tells uh sql to terminate our statement because if you don't it's going to expect something else it's going to expect maybe like an order by you know maybe something like an order and and and, and stuff here we're saying that no this is the full statement so it's a semicolon it's just a standard way to terminate an sql statement so let's press that let's hit enter and this returns the all the columns from records the records table and it's going to show you the first five rows, okay? So I know this is very poorly formatted and now it looks like it's all messy, but that's okay. Later when we use this in Python, we can format that into a pandas data frame. Um, so right now, don't worry about that, okay? And of course, if you said, hey, can I, can I also write all of this in like new lines? Can I not have them in a single line, but can I put them in new lines? You can do that as well. So I can do something like select SQL instead of Actually, let's let's do that, right? Let's let's say select SQL, and uh, instead of actually putting the whole thing uh, from and everything in one line, I'm gonna press enter. Notice that because I did not terminate my statement with a semicolon, it expects me to continue on my statement. So I'm I can write from, and I can say SQLite master, and then I can press enter again. Again, I haven't put a semicolon, so it expect me to continue my statement. So where, and I say name. And then this is the name of my table. What do I name it? I name it records. So I can put records in here, put a semicolon finally, because this is the full statement, press enter, and I can see the same thing in here. This returns the same output as the dot schema records that we did earlier. So this is the same as this, right? So it gives you the same, same results, create table, and it shows you how it's created, okay? So this is all nice, but how do you exit the SQLite uh, DB shell? Well, to exit, that's really simple. All you need to do is to say dot quit. So put a dot quit and this will quit uh, back into your shell. Now I'm back into my bash shell. So I'm no longer in the database uh, DB shell. If you work in Python and you prefer to interact with SQL in a more Python native uh, environment, you will likely want to use something known as the ORM. And the most popular ORM is SQL Alchemy. I'll explain what an ORM is and stuff like that. But the, the full, I have a full materials, I have full courses on that. Uh, it's completely free, it's on GitHub. I have a three part in depth guide on SQL Alchemy. And you can go and learn more about that. Let me try to pull that link up there. Um, see if I have it here. So I have a, I have this link here, uh, github.com slash only phantom slash SQL alchemy. Uh, if you like to work with SQL a lot in Python and you want to interact with it using Python code, um, then you can read more about this. There is a full three part chapter to it and um, all the code samples, the data sets, the explanatory guide, are all of that are, are free on my GitHub account. So all you need to do is to go to my GitHub account. I'll give you a link in the description, click on that. And then from here, you can download that, you can start, you can fork it, and you can work through the materials from here and learn, learn about that.
okay? And that's it for this video, very short video, but uh, hopefully I explain how to work with SQLite, uh, get, get started with SQLite really, really quickly. If you come from a CSV environment and you're not sure how to get started, hopefully this gives you a nice uh, starting point and starting guide. Okay, I know that it's, I said that it's the end of the video, but I also want to make sure that you know that all of the code can be found on my GitHub. So I created a very nice uh, markdown file with all the explanation as well as the code examples that you can copy and paste and if you get something wrong, you can refer to that document. So I want to paste a link there and you can actually click on that and it would it would be right there. All the all the instructions from what we did earlier. Okay, so that's that's all. Um see you next time.